Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our series on derivatives. If you haven't already, make sure to check out some of my previous videos. I have them linked in the corner. Click that little I and it'll get you there. Otherwise, specifically today, we are talking about the natural log of x and how we can take the derivative of it and why it is the way it is. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Also, it's like 100 degrees here today and I'm really hot, so rosy cheeks. Okay, so here's our rule. The derivative of natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. And you're probably thinking, why? Well, I have the answer for you. So if we remember our logs, we can rewrite y equals natural log of x as e to the power of y equals x. And actually, what we're going to do is we're going to use implicit, differ <coughs> implicit differentiation on this boy. So here, I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of both sides in terms of x. If we remember how to take the derivative of e to the power of y, first we drop it down, but we need to multiply it by the derivative of y, so d dx of the exponent. Now we can't take the derivative of y in terms of x, which means we just have to leave it as the first derivative of y, or as I like to write it, y prime. We multiply that by e to the power of y. So here I get y prime e to the power of y is equal to the derivative of x, which is just which is just one. So here what I want to do is I want to get y prime all by itself. If I do that, I'm going to divide both sides by e to the y. But if we remember, e to the y was equal to x. So I can plug that in and I get one over x. And remember that y was originally equal to the natural log of x, which means that the first derivative of the natural log of x is equal to one over x. So that's why the derivative is 1 over x. There is another rule that we have here where if it's not just x on the inside, so we have some function. In our example right here, we have 2x plus 1 on the inside. The inside still goes to the denominator. So similar to 1 over x, it becomes 1 over the inside. But now we need to multiply it by the first derivative of whatever is on the inside. The reason for this is that we're secretly using chain rule. So we have our outside is going to be natural log, and we have our inside is going to be 2x plus 1. If we want to use chain rule rules on this, I have my u is going to be 2x plus 1, and my g of u is going to be the natural log of u. I want to go ahead and take the derivative of both of these. So first I have u prime is equal to 2, and g prime of u is going to be what we just learned, so 1 over u. When I plug these in, I get f prime of x is equal to 2 times 1 over u. I'm going to replace our u back in, so 2x plus 1. When I rewrite this, I get 2 over 2x plus 1. Using our shortcut, the, our f of x, our inside was 2x plus 1, and the derivative of our inside was 2. So instead of writing all of this out for chain rule, you could just skip a step and go straight to this right here. Let's go ahead and try that over here. We're going to incorporate the natural log with quotient rule. So first, I'm going to label my outside and my inside. Alrighty, so actually I'm going to do g prime of u first. And here I get 1 over u. Now if we want, we can go ahead and apply the quotient rule. So I have my numerator is x plus 1, and my denominator is x minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and write this out as we normally do. Okay, so we get our f prime of x is equal to 1, which is actually the same as our g prime of x. This is also equal to 1. So in order to find this u prime, let's go ahead and apply quotient rule. First, I'm going to multiply from the bottom to the top. So here I get 1 times x minus 1. And now I need to subtract from the top to the bottom. So this is going to be x plus 1 times 1. And all of this is divided by the denominator squared, so we get x minus 1 squared. Let's go ahead and simplify this out a little bit. So I have x minus 1. And don't forget to distribute this minus sign. So we get minus x minus 1 all over quantity x minus 1 squared. So if we notice here, our x and our minus x cancel out. And we are just left with negative 2 over x minus 1 squared. So let's go ahead and plug this into our u prime. Negative 2 over x minus 1 squared. 
Okay, so now we have our chain rule all written out here, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two together in order to get the derivative. So I'm going to write the equals for the derivative, and I get negative 2 times x minus 1 squared times 1 over u, and I'll plug in what u is equal to. Side note, when we have 1 over a fraction, x plus 1 over x minus 1, Really what we can do is flip that fraction, so x minus 1 over x plus 1. That's because it just reverses it. So here I'm going to multiply by x minus 1 over x plus 1. And here actually one of the x minus 1's cancels out, and so we're left with negative 2 over x minus 1 times x plus 1. If we wanted to, we can multiply that out. It is a difference of squares, so we get x squared minus 1. And we've got our first derivative. Okay, so what happens if we have the composition of natural logs? So I'm going to set this up again with our chain rule. We get u is equal to the inside, which is natural log of x. And we have g of u is also equal to the natural log of u. So let's find u prime. u prime is equal to 1 over x. Same thing for g prime, but this one's going to be 1 over u because we changed our variable. Let's go ahead and plug this in. So I get my derivative is equal to 1 over x, u prime times 1 over u, which is 1 over the natural log of x. If I combine these, I just get 1 over x natural log x. So the composition wasn't that scary, it just looks scary. But when you separate it all out, it works out pretty nicely. Let's go ahead and try this with trigonometry. So here we have the derivative of the natural log of cosine of x squared. I have my inside is going to be cosine squared of x, and my outside is g of u, which is the natural log of u. We already know what this derivative is going to be. It's going to be 1 over u, and now I want to find u prime. Notice here that I'm going to use chain rule again. So this 2 is actually considered the outside, and the cosine of x is considered the inside. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of the outside at the inside, which means I'm going to do power rule. So I get 2 cosine of x times the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. If I wanted to simplify that out, I get negative 2 cosine of x sine of x. And we can go ahead and use this to find the derivative. So here I'm going to multiply negative 2 cosine of x sine of x times 1 over u, which that is going to be 1 over cosine squared of x. If I rewrite that, I get negative 2 which means one of those cosines actually is canceled out. So I get one of them gone, and here I can combine sine of x divided by cosine of x. That is equal to negative 2 tangent of x. And there we have our derivative. Okay, we have one more. We're going to go ahead and use product rule. So I'll go ahead and highlight our different functions. We have x squared plus 1 is our first function, and the natural log of x is our second function. Alrighty, so if we find f prime of x, we're going to end up with 2x, just using power rule. And now we're going to use our new rule, and we get the g prime of x is 1 over x. So in order to find this derivative, I'm going to go ahead and multiply from bottom to the top. So here I get 2x times the natural log of x. And I'm going to add from the top to the bottom. So here I get x squared plus 1 times 1 over x. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out, and we can simplify this one more time. So 2x times the natural log of x, this becomes a normal x, and this is stays 1 over x. And there we have our derivative. So that's, so that's how we can use the natural log of x with product rule. So that's all I have for us today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and comment other videos or topics or problems you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.